check this out, guys. It's a dead on arrival, 1999 Ford F-150 long bed. Scored this baby for 300 bucks. It doesn't run, but it will at the end of this video. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Dan H, and welcome to the project. Allow me to introduce you to a new, unexpected project right here. This is a 1999 Ford F-150. As you can see, it's a regular cab. Simple old two-door with a bench seat. Uh, it's got a good battery. We just charged it. But yeah, it is a base package, manual, windows, a long bed, good work truck. It does not run. That's why we were able to pick it up for uh, 300 bucks. So this thing, uh, I don't know, that'll get me around to the dumps and back, dumping scrap Jeep parts. But uh, it's actually kind of a, a stepping stone to uh, make up for this Ford Expedition. I don't know if you remember this beautiful Expedition my father found. I can't believe it. He rolled it, it's wrecked. So we're looking into other Fords. We found this one, we couldn't um, couldn't pass up the price, but we were looking for maybe um, uh, like a three door pickup, something with a smaller back seat that we found this, we figured we'll flip this, uh, get this running, practice on our pickup trucks. I haven't had a pickup truck on the channel, but this could be it. But anyway, we're gonna try to get this running and then uh, we'll show you what we did so far. All right, let's check this baby out off the hood so we did charge the battery and look at this cleaner. sucker <laughs> remove the air cleaner this is a six cylinder so it's not a uh, five four triton like that thing it's not even a four eight but uh why don't we go ahead we'll crank this thing we'll see what happens when we try to start it uh it was sold with a bad fuel pump so we're just going to go through the motions we're gonna uh, try and diagnose that for sure. At a first glance, everything seemed okay with this engine. Uh, it has oil in it, even though there's a hole in the dipstick tube. A little rust everywhere, to be expected. So, here we go, start it. <laughs> That's enough of that. <laughs> then we went over here, we took all these fuses out, all these starter relays, some fuses. We swapped that with the Expedition fuses and relays. 99, it's the same setup. And uh, we know that works because it was running when it was flipped over and smashed. So we swapped the fuses and all that stuff. That didn't work. Then we grabbed the old starter fluid and we went ahead and we did this. All right, ready when you are. So we know it starts when it's got fuel. So, uh, wow. The belt is screeching like a banshee. It's been sitting for a couple years. So we probably have a seized pulley somewhere. Probably this AC compressor. I'm amazed this even has AC. Well, that is what we're dealing with. So uh, we got ourselves a fuel pump. Wow, here it is. I left it up here in the dash. We're gonna go ahead and drop the gas tank and put in a fuel pump. All right, so here is the fuel tank on this pickup truck right here on the driver's side and it goes up and down long ways and I'm pretty sure the fuel pump is somewhere around where those wires go resting on the top. So we're gonna have to drop this fuel tank in order to get to the fuel pump. Uh, I think that's the route I want to go um, for this video. I have seen some videos where people just cut a hole in the bed and then get to the pump right there. I don't really want to do that. Uh, so for my way, when we drop the tank, I guess it would help to have a empty tank of gas. Let's see what we got. Um, keys. We got, we got uh, just less than a half a tank. So we're gonna have a half of a hell of a time of a job trying to get this done. All right, here we go. Got the rear jacked up on jack stands. Front wheels chocked, of course. This is the fuel tank. It's got a strap in the back and one strap in the front. And we'll come around over here. 
and what it looks like. And it looks like the strap is connected with a little 13 millimeter bolt there into the frame and another one right there. So that looks simple to remove. Can't be that easy. <laughs> and here is the fuel pump sitting in there. Uh, that's hard to get to. That's why we got to drop the fuel tank. And then I found the fuel lines. It looks like they ride up in this frame rail all the way to the end there we go let there be light so there are the fuel lines they don't look too bad they look like they've been protected from grime resting in this rail so hopefully uh that'll be a quick drop and then uh yeah we'll see what's up there because i can't maybe you can <laughs> all right i got a second jack under the fuel tank and it looks like we got 13 millimeters uh, a 13 millimeter under here. Uh, so let's see if I can get that. One. And here we go for number two. So we lowered down the fuel tank a little bit. The front is hanging down nicely, but the rear is held up by two hose clamps on the filler lines. We got hose right there. We got one and two. I'm just gonna try to get to that with a little flathead screwdriver. We'll see if I can slide those back and we'll get the whole fuel tank resting on the ground. Easy peasy. Yeah, easy peasy indeed. I just slid off the hoses and the tank slid down. Let's see if we can lower this tank all the way without putting too much pressure on these fuel lines. Let's see if we can center it a little better. Yeah, that's thing that down. yeah I'll lift it up. Whoopsie. Broke something. I didn't see this. Look at that. Was that a little EVAP thing? Ah, crap. Yep. Broke that right off of here. No biggie. We'll replace it. Looks like we're gonna have to replace these filler lines too. Look how old and brittle these are. Eh, a couple bucks. We'll save the day. Bye bye, rust and crust. Eh, here's our first victim. Broken. Let's see if we can fix it or replace it. I'll put a part number and a link in the description when I figure out what it is. All right, it looks like we got six 10 millimeter up here. Oh, there she be. Wow. Don't drop any. Oh yeah, let me get the nuts. Gas tank. Yeah, <laughs> take these out, absolutely. All right, there she be, here's the fuel sending unit here's the fuel filter here's the float tells you what your gauge reads that's it we got to replace this guy that's the pump hopefully this is the reason why the truck doesn't start this is the bad this is the good we're gonna have to put this where that is uh, we got a little plug right here now if this plug doesn't fit in here this kit i got came with this connection, we just have to cut and splice that in. Also, this tube has uh, permanent straps. We have to go ahead and put this tube in, cut it to size, and we got hose clamps for it. And also this little bottom piece over here, this little rubber crotch here, we're gonna have to slide that in uh, just like that. And just one little strap right there holding it together. This is an easy peasy swap. So, all right, let's get cracking. Looks like this is a quarter inch, maybe? Let's see. This was actually 7.30 seconds for me. <laughs> Sucker. And pull this out. There we go. Uh, 
you know, this filter is looking a little dirty. We should soak it in gasoline, clean it up. <laughs> oh, that's such a bad joke. Ugh, I'm gonna need two hands. Sorry, guys. Oh, you're becoming a Ford mechanic. <laughs> Last time I did this was on my Mustang like 10 years ago. Wow. Maybe see. even 20 years ago. All right, got the old fuel pump off. Pried off the little filter. It's got this little nipple on here. That will clip nicely onto this new little nipple right there. And that's that right there. And I'm also gonna have to put on this connector because uh, obviously, they're two different sizes. So I'm guessing black to black. <laughs> Usually black is always ground and whatever the heck the other color is, we'll splice that on too. And since we're dealing with fuel, I guess we don't want any arcing, right? So we'll make these connections very <laughs> different. High and low. Yeah, just a reminder, you're working with a lot of fuel. <laughs> it's an open fuel container right here, so. Uh, maybe don't work with open flames. Last thing is the old crappy filter, little screen. This on the nipple. Did I say nipple? <laughs> it is a bit nipply out. It is it's a bit nipply out. I mean nippy out. <laughs> what did I say? Nipple? <laughs> <laughs> it is a bit cold out. There we go. All assembled. So we will put our assembly back in the tank. Alright. Back her up. We got our float in, we got our filter in, kerplunk, don't want to pinch anything in there, just guide it back in nice and neat, tighten these bad boys. Yeah, thank you, Michael Duck. She's in. Now, before we go ahead and put this thing back up where it belongs, we're gonna go test this out. But before we test it out, let's test the old one to make sure that was indeed the problem. Let's see. We're going live. No editing here. I'll just grab the negative, grab the positive. We got a good battery, so we know this should go bzzz if it's good. Ready? Contact. Oh, yeah. Nothing. <laughs> Locked. It was the fuel pump. Excellent. High five. We'll pump it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this baby screeched like a banshee. Well, we started it before with the starter fluid, so I'm just going to try to PB blast all these belt thingies. <laughs> Let's get all these pulleys nice and lubed. We'll find out which one's locked. Maybe they all are. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Daddy. We should even spray the belt <laughs> so it doesn't shred. It'll just slide. Uh. Yeah. Oh well. Let's see if that does anything. All right. I guess we'll uh, just put it in the on position, maybe four or five times. Just prime it. We we'll get that fuel pump. Oh, I heard. I hear something. I heard something kicking in. Oh yeah. What do you think? Uh, keep priming a little bit. Why do I hear that in the engine bay? That's weird, though. Might be 
a relay. Maybe. The relay is working for the first time ever. <laughs> All right, let's we'll see if we can turn it over. Hey! Woo! Yeah, baby! So it's getting dark. I'm just gonna go ahead and put the fuel tank back up tomorrow when it's uh, woo, when it's a little bit uh, warmer and lighter. All right, so here we are a few hours later. So what happened was we started it and the belt was seized. That's why you heard all that squeaking noise. It was actually the alternator. Alternator was all stuck. So it kind of chewed up the belt. And then we went to take off the tensioner. You can't see it here. There we go. There's a new tensioner. If you want to change a tensioner, you need a T50 Torx on a breaker bar. Get that sucker right off. That little middle stud right there. There we go. So we got ourselves a new tensioner. This is part number 89260. This is what the tensioner looked like. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of crap going on here. This was all loose and wiggly. So new tensioner. All right. New belt. And the belt for this is 5061030. It's got six ribs on it, and I think it's 2,615 centimeters. I think that's how they measure it. I don't know. All right, we're back with some daylight, and we're going to replace these tubes, these fill tubes, because this is just rotting, cracked, all dried up. I think there's a split in this one. So we've got replacement ones from the auto parts store. This is, like, universal. It's got wire in here, and it's bendy. Uh... That's the barcode. I don't know what it's actually called. It's Deco, so we got this at Advanced Auto. But yeah, we're gonna replace these and then uh, pop them right on there. Then we'll get this tank back in place. Oh, I got a new, um, what is it called? Fuel tank vent valve. I guess it keeps a proper amount of pressure inside your tank so your EVAP knows what's normal. Dang the EVAP system. Anyway, we got this thing because I broke the original one. Here is the original one. I bought a little piece of plastic PVC. I was just going to sleeve this, but then I found this one at AutoZone. Um, it should be a, an exact replacement. Here is the part number for that. It's a Dorman. It's part number 911061. So we're going to put this in instead. Hope it does a trick. It's like 50 bucks, so be careful. Don't be a doofus like me and don't break yours. Or break it and just buy a new one. All right, got my fill tubes on. Put a little waterproof grease on here. And the new vent valve. It just, uh, well, it goes on facing the rear. And then it clicks in 90 degrees, locks into place. There she be. Now I'm gonna jack this up almost to the top. Ooh, look at all that rust in there. And then I'm gonna reach in there again and slide on that tube. That's where it goes to. And then, uh, yeah, and we'll get this all the way up. Attach these guys to these guys. This fill neck is uh, not completely rotted, so that's great. And then uh, this thing should be ready to go. All right, I got my new filler hoses all attached with hose clamps. <laughs> Man, that's tough to get to. Uh, you definitely need two people to do this. This is a two-person job. Manipulating the tank and then trying to balance it and then uh, putting on these hoses. Wow, that's rough. Sorry I'm not filming it in action. This is most certainly an impromptu project, but we're getting it done. All right, got those straps in. Dropped the jack and it stayed where it's supposed to be. That's awesome. We are all done. Time to, uh, time to start it again. Yeah. All right, here we go. Come on, baby.
it, baby. <laughs> Purr like a kitten. All right, guys. I think we need to throttle body clean there because that thing is shrieking a little bit. But it is running, it is idling on its own. We gotta take this thing to get some fresh gas. We need a new muffler. But uh, she's running. So, so far we're into this thing about $450. We got ourselves a nice work truck. And it'll probably be for sale soon. So, uh, all right guys, that is it. Thank you for watching my DOA Ford F-150 video. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the next project. Peace.